my name is Elisha Hall. I'm doing this presentation on behalf of Yah Elohim and Dr. Jada Rahim. From Seed Thoughts to Seed Preservation, Food and Seed Security. Seed Thoughts want to plant other similar seed thoughts. Soon we will have a field of similar thoughts that was germinated by the original thought. And we see this all over like a fractal. Brainwave patterns dictate how we respond in any given situation. This is extremely important. Tones and frequencies are all around us and inside us. The slower the brainwave pattern, the deeper and more insightful is our perception. And this is true for young people as well. The greater calm and clarity we experience, the greater our true happiness is. And uh, this is an extremely important point. Um, we cannot say enough for calm and clarity. Let us consider this as we turn our thoughts to food and see security and sovereignty. And what we harvest is what we plant. Okay? So establishing food and seed security. So uh, a lot of people are talking about seed saving and how do we save seeds? Where do we get them from? And so one of the things we talk about is, so what is food and seed security? All right? Uh, how do you get the seeds? How do you preserve them, etc.? So food security is when you can harvest today and eat today, okay? And that's uh, one of Dr. Jada Rahim's um, pieces. He's looking there at those uh, delicious pieces that he grew. And so the World Food Summit's definition is exists within all people at all times, have physical and economic access to sufficient, safe, and nutritious food, all right? And so what is seed security? Uh, when a group or community has to uh, get the seeds it needs to provide superior nutrition to the members of the group or community, all right? That there is a legacy of non-GMO, open-pollinated, non-hybrid heirloom seeds to be left for future generations, uh, that the seeds are in the hands of the people, not multinational corporations or conglomerates, and that there is sufficient land to cultivate the seeds without duress or harm from GMO, hybrid, pesticide-laden plants or seeds. Okay, so this is how we are defining seed security, which is extremely important. All right, seed security is when you have access to open pollinated heirloom seeds and the technology to save some and turn them into long term food. All right, and heirloom is extremely important because heirloom seeds are seeds that have not been tampered with or touched um, since they've been on this earth. And uh, we definitely want to grow with heirloom seeds if we have a choice of all others. And so why is seed and food security important? Um, of course, so that we can have access to food, but not just us having access to food. This is about our children and actually our seven generations ahead. So we're talking about our children's 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 children, you know, and how do they have access to food? And so we're preserving seeds for that generation. And so what are some of the things that currently threaten our access to food? And so one of those things is climate change. That's a huge issue. We all know about that. Uh, decreasing access to fresh water, decreasing food and seed diversity, uh, global mass extinction events. Uh, we're seeing a lot more of those happen more frequently and they're starting to spread out more. Pollution and toxicity of air, soil, water. Uh, we've definitely seen that across this country but also across the globe and, and recently. And also an increase of uh, nationalist white power movements is leading to the decreased access to support systems for marginalized non-white people globally, um, e.g. Brexit, Trumpism, Netherlands, France. And we've seen that as well, um, that it's harder to move around and to do our, 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 seep, our preservation of our, of our culture and ourselves uh, when they, these things are on an increase, when they're on, on a rise across the planet, all right? And so these things are actually threatening our access to food. And uh, what we have to do is be very careful about how we proceed and, and, and very strategic about how uh, we, we, we kind of apply that to our seeds. A faltering global economy. Um, enough said there. I don't have to go into that. You've got an increase in convenience, prepackaged and microwavable food including fruits and vegetables, uh, which is leading to decreased nutrition available from food. And this is extremely important because we think that we're getting more nutrients in our food than we actually are. And so if you can shop organic, please do, because you're getting at least 30 to 40 percent more 
nutritional value there. Um, we've got a dying out and a marginalization of black farmers, and this is extremely important. Um, black farmers right now make up less than 5% of all the farmers in this country. And we've got an increasing global agribusiness and fac faculty farming. So all of these things are leading to, they're basically you know, threats on our access to food. All right, and we want to address that as we do this sustainability work. And so the mass extinction of several forms of life on the planet is also important in this. Uh, we are in a period of decreasing biodiversity on the planet. And this decreasing biodiversity is caused by humans, you know, and our activity on this planet. And so we're experiencing a worldwide mass extinction of plants and animals. Uh, this is happening all over the world, and it's ongoing and continues to get worse and worse because we continue to put more and more chemicals and pollutions into uh, natural um, waters, natural lands, as we extract, you know, minerals through things like fracking and other, um, other uh, kind of uh, non-natural ways. And so worldwide we see control uh, by multinationals. You know, Monsanto does not want you to feed the world. They want to control the world supply, et cetera, right? And so we're seeing a lot of this happen and it's leading to a threatening, a threat on our, it's causing a threat on our food system, all right? Um, and so increasing globalization of food supply means less food sovereignty. Uh, and this is changing the global dynamic of demand and the acceptance of free market liberal approach to developing countries um, and to an increasing presence of multinationals in all phases of agribusiness systems. And we've seen this in other places, especially on the continent where, um, you know, mothers, you know, farmers have had to step up in the face of agribusiness uh, to say, no, you can't put your seeds here. And um, we're continuing to see more and more of it. But that is few and far between because we're also seeing a rise in where they're trying to grow their seeds. And so it's definitely something that is um, we need more and more support and we need to be supporting our brothers and sisters in the diaspora who are uh, kind of dealing with companies like Monsanto and others who are trying to force their seeds, uh, their crops, et cetera, onto to these lands. Um, it, it's definitely something that we want to, we, we need to kind of look at if we're going to talk sustainability long term. Uh, because ultimately, if not, then it's a, we're, you know, it's a creating a monoculture, agriculture, which reduces crop diversity. And uh, diversity is extremely important uh, for sustainability. Uh, you know, you can't have the seed preservation without it. And so those who control the seeds control the food supply. And we've seen that before. Uh, we know how that goes. And it's important for us to understand that. And so what is a seed? Um, at the basic level, you know, uh, a seed is, <laughs> is life <laughs> um, at the very, very basic level. And so why is preservation of seeds important? Uh, why is preservation of life important? Right? That's a question that all of us should be asking, right? Um, but also seed preservation connects us with our past. And so there is a, um, a cultural memory that is being passed down, not just through the practice of putting your hands in the soil, but through the cultivation, caring and preservation of seeds that have been preserved by our ancestors. Uh, for generations and generations and generations, right? And we talked about earlier, it, it, it ensures the future. And so we want to preserve seeds because the seeds are direct, um, you know, direct uh, replication of what we want to preserve in our, in, our, in our generations for the future. And so food slash seed security Basically, you produce your own food or collaborate with your local farmers. And so as we start to develop uh, our seeds and, and our practices, and as we start to um, do this work, and what we've seen as a theme, a constant theme in this year's summit is 
uh, making sure that you develop with uh, local farmers. That's extremely important um, because the local farmers are the ones who are going to be able to create a seed preservation relationship with you. All right. And so for food and seed security, save your viable seeds and or purchase from reputable seed retailers. OK. Um, and then ultimately what you're going to do is create a seed kind of saving chain and you'll have other people uh, who are around you maintaining their seeds as well. Um, and so what kind of seeds do we want to save? Uh, you know, excellent question. We talked about any seeds, you know, do we want to save all seeds? Are, are the certain seeds are more of a priority than others, right? And so open pollinated heirloom seeds versus hybrid seeds. So we're going to talk about why one and not the other. Um, and so what do we mean when we say heirloom and open pollinated? Excellent, excellent question. Let's break it down. All right. So ultimately, we also need to consider biodynamic and organic seeds. OK. And this presentation is kind of an overview of all of these many different types of seeds and, and the practices that we would take to preserve them. And so where do we get these seeds from? Well, there are seed swaps. And these are also known as seed exchanges. Um, you can start your own if there, there are none in your area. And this is where people come together. They exchange their seeds. Um, I'll here, give me five of your cantaloupe for, you know, five of my uh, asparagus seeds. Or, you know, I've got this heirloom okra here. Okay, it's an excellent, excellent opportunity. There are also seed banks or seed libraries, okay? Uh, these are locations where they're storing bulk seeds, all right? Um, so I, all of those are good opportunities and options for you. Research seed companies that are committed to access to quality seeds. It's extremely important, especially the black-owned companies, all right, that are saving seeds in this country and in the diaspora. Uh, seeds are being saved on a global level, but are you really the beneficiary? Uh, which is an extremely important point, all right? Um, sometimes seeds are being saved by people who are trying to create tunnels in the grounds and save them and preserve them for the end of the world, right? So we got to know what people's motives are and whether or not uh, these seeds are for us and whether or not we're going to benefit from them. So we're going to pause here. This is the end of part one. I'm going to continue into part two. Uh, where we're going to learn a little bit more, go a little bit deeper into the presentation um, and talk about the sprouting for C slash food security and superior nutrition. OK, so here it is. Part two. Uh, we'll go right into it um, from seed thoughts to seed preservation, the basic of sprouting. All right. So we've got our seeds saved. We had our seeds share. We've got maybe we had a bank. We grab some seeds. Um, you know, what do we do now? How do we get these seeds going? Uh, do we put them in water? Do we, you know, uh, leave them out in the sun, etc. So, you know, um, what is the great thing that we can do with seeds, right? Um, as they are um, living things. So we can sprout these seeds, all right? And there you see uh, sprouts, delicious sprouts, very healthy for you. So uh, Dr. Jada Rahim shares with us his insights about sprouts. Anything that grows has to sprout. Seeds, beans, nuts, peas, anything that grows. Sprouts are the initial dynamic part of life. When the seed moves from potential energy, the hard seed interacts with water, the elixir of life, moving to fulfill its destiny to grow, to be an oak tree, a dandelion herb, a flower. All plants originate with seeds. Okay. I think this is an excellent um, kind of combination of, we talked about the frequency earlier. Seeds have their own frequency. They have a wavelength that they're moving on. And it's extremely important that we understand that dynamic too. Everything has energy. Imagine the energy that a young child has. Exuberant, hitting the ground running. Sprouts will help you return to the energy level you had when you were young. Since the plant is young, it has the nutrients to facilitate all of the human faculties.
to perform. Sprouts are condensed nutrients in a very easily digestible form. Soft, tender, and vibrant, as soon as you behold a sprout, you know that it is something good to eat. Why should I grow sprouts? Um, and so uh, Dr. Rahim says, well, when we are growing the sprouts, we're mentally and emotionally involved. The saliva, the golden elixir, which would differentiate the flavors in the food, has already filled the mouth from growing the food. Remember, digestion begins before the harvest. If you are growing the sprout, you are actively engaged in the actual process. You are looking at this develop and uh, the palate is ignited for what is going, it's going to taste like. And so when preparing the food, the smell, the color, the anticipation are all a part of the digestive process. It's a really beautiful um, descriptor of why we do things holistically and, and why, you know, it's not just about, you know, um, the, 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 the final product or the food being done, but it's all the things that come as a part of that process and the anticipation and the patience and the building and the development of the taste in your mouth before it even happens. So there's an advantage of sprouts. Uh, they're easy to make. They supply vital nutrients. They have a great return for investment. They're economical. They're plenty to keep and share, which is extremely important, uh, being able to share and, and to to encourage others and model for others um, how to do this. And as with um, save dormant seeds, sprouts provide a great way to be autonomous with your food supply. Um, and that's extremely important in being able to be autonomous with your food supply. So um, there are some other advantages with sprouts. They're a great way to, um, they have an interaction with nature and with growing life. And we were talking about you know life inside of that seed but these sprouts are always interacting with nature. They're giving uh, you an opportunity to do that, and they're engaging with neighbor, nature, with the sun, with the water, with the energy in the space uh, as well. You want to make sure that that energy, when you're growing these sprouts, is, is, uh, is, is tight, is on point, because the sprouts, the seeds, are going to feed off of whatever energy is in that space. Um, and that's extremely important. Great insight into self-knowledge. So as you learn about and watch these sprouts grow, you're also learning about yourself. You are also uh, able to go through the process with the sprouts. Uh, and of those of you who've grown before, uh, or those of you who have children, you know that it's a reflexive process, a reflective process. And so by which you are gaining knowledge about self as you go through growth with another. Um, also, insight into knowledge of the creator. As you watch the beauty of this unfold, it makes you understand deeper that there is a, an all-encompassing something, powerful being, um, and not just the creator, but that your ancestors are present as that seed takes form as it sprouts and as it engages with the energy and, and the elements in the space. And so it's a beautiful thing to participate in and to see, um, more importantly, the seeds beget seeds, beget seeds, beget seeds. And the infinity that is involved with nature, um, with the divine. And lastly, the insight into the meaning of life. And so as you see this divinity and this infinite, infinite amount, um, you see that there is both uh, a delicacy and a certain kind of um, extreme scarcity <laughs> that it can be present and abundance that is also present. And so you have to both take care in a way so that you don't lose the seed and at the same time honor the seed every day in its abundance because in, its, in that one seed is the potential for thousands, for, for hundreds of thousands of seeds. And that abundance is everywhere. Abundance is in the seed, abundance is in you, abundance is all around us. And so it's a beautiful uh, thing to partake in not just the cultivation 
of the seed, but the cultivation through all of these pieces as well. Um, in addition to that, there are more advantages. So you've got the knowledge of the source of your food supply. Uh, you know, you've got once you're organized, you can have food on demand, which is extremely important, right? Uh, you have very little equipment needed to do this. Uh, that's very important. We've got people presenting about sustainability from all across the world. And not everyone has access to uh, tools and, and equipment and money and resources. But if we can get our hands on seeds, we can grow and sprout them really without needing much of those. And so it's, it's important to be able to uh, know that not, much, not a lot is required. Even though we see a lot of tools and equipment involved in, in, in much of this, when we're talking about this process, um, you can do it with very little. And uh, it's easy to do while traveling, which I, I love that, right? You, st you know, put it in your car, put it in your, um, tra take it with you. They can sprout where you are. I think that's great. And little to no waste, right? So if your carbon footprint, so to speak, is very small, which is good. Um, and I think that we should be continuing to think about our, how are our uh, growing practices, little to no waste. And so um, sprouts are also high in enzymes that are uh, not present in the adult plant, which is uh, very important because without those enzymes, we can't break down the food that we are putting into our bodies. Right. So those sprouts contain chlorophyll, a green pigment that imparts excellent nutrients uh, and nutrition into the body. Chlorophyll is extremely important. Right. And um, the more you can get into your body, the better. All right. It contributes significantly to the life giving qualities of the plant, which is important. And it is uh, the result of photosynthesis uh, in which the plant takes the energy of the sun and converts it into fuel. So. Um, you know, we can find chlorophyll in other, uh, you know, in, 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 in leafy greens and, um, you know, in things like, um, you know, corella and things like that, uh, spirulina. But this, uh, this is a type of chlorophyll that is really, really packed with super, nutrition, <laughs> super nutrients almost similar to like uh, microgreens, et cetera. And so uh, this kind of chlorophyll and like, you know, is like almost like uh, <laughs> baby chlorophyll with super energy packed with a lot of nutrients and at, at a point in the chlorophyll's life where it's early and strong. And so that's why you want to catch it um, when you do the sprouting and when you have it in the sprouting um, process. Uh, in addition to that, um, You've got some sprouts that are easy to start with. And so mung sprouts, easy to start with. Uh, different varieties of lentils, you can good to go right away. And also sunflower seeds, uh, which are also very important for you, um, especially if you want to have, uh, you know, um, uh, phosphorus in your uh, body, which is, is good for uh, keeping the kidneys regulated, regulated, et cetera. So start with some seed sprouts that are easy to start with if you want to learn. These are three that are great. So what do you need to get started with sprouting? Well, a container um, with a, you know, a drain, um, you can start with that. You know, um, perhaps a jar with a perforated top um, or a bag or stockings or socks or cheesecloth or uh, other similar, uh, you know, porous containers. Uh, there's also automatic sprouting devices. Basically, it's up to you. <laughs> uh, once you start to, you know, see how it goes and learn and do the research, you can, you'll see that um, there's, you know, a lot of different ways that you can do it and a lot of different things that you can use that you already have around the house, which is a key sustainability uh, practice and and principle being able to reuse things that you already have available to you all right um, and so in addition 
to what's needed to get Sprout starting, right? Um, we also want to think about, you know, what you sprout, right? So we talked about the mung beans. We talked about the lentils. Uh, you also do uh, azuki beans, almonds, gabanzo beans, quinoa, rice, sunflower seeds. We talked about those. Teff. Teff is excellent, 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 excellent. Um, and, you know, it's got a, a lot of nutrients in it as well. Onion seeds, pumpkin seeds, popcorn. Uh, amaranth, which is great, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, Kamut, oats, millet, peas, so many, right? Um, anything that grows can be sprouted. So if you want to sprout it, most likely you can sprout it and, uh, you know, just try it. And you may have to try it multiple times before you get it right, but that's okay. All right. So what's the best medium for sprouting? Sprouts are generally grown without soil, um, which is extremely important, but also is why it's uh, little to no resources to do it. And sprouting in soil provides a higher chlorophyll content. And so we call these microgreens. Again, earlier I was talking about the microgreens. So you can sprout without soil and you can sprout in soil. All right. And that's extremely important to kind of differentiate those two. Um, now, again, if you want the higher chlorophyll, then you're going to want to go with the soil. So here are some examples of sprouting, okay? And we see the cheesecloth over uh, what you hate to have mason jars right there, and you've got sprouting happening. Um, this looks like a sprouting system on the right, and you've got the sprouting happening as well. So those are just two of dozens and dozens of ways to do it. Uh, placing sprouts in the sun briefly also slightly enhances their chlorophyll content, uh, which is extremely important, okay? So make sure that you allow the sprouts to have that sun so that you can enhance and, and, and add to the photosynthetic process. And so um, what's the difference between sprouts and microgreens? The difference between the two is determined by whether or not the seed is planted in soil and exactly how much of the plant is being consumed, okay? And so basically, a lot of those microgreens that we see, you know, selling in uh, Whole Foods or other places or even farmer's markets sometimes for five, eight dollars, this, that's, we just took you through a process where you can make those at home, all right? And you don't have to go there, you can make your own, and so um, that's really important, right? Um, sprouts are grown in water. Microgreens are grown in soil. With sprouts, you eat the seed after the seedling. With microgreens, you eat from the soil level up, okay? Uh, also very important, all right? So we keep in mind, you know, learn one, learn them both, however it works for you. Um, Sprouting is extremely important. Um, one of the things that we can see is that, you know, sprouts are germinated in water and rinsed approximately twice per day. Uh, both the seed and the seedling are consumed, like we talked about. It's harvested within four to six days. And the type of sprouts, we went through all of those. And so with microgreens, um, which is a little different, you know, uh, you consume the edible leaves and the stem, um, in the, in the growth stage, when its first two to four leaves appear, it's harvested within approximately one to two weeks, so it takes a little longer. Um, you eat the stem and the greens only, not the seed. You chop it off at the soil level. Gets added nutrients from the soil and uh, experiences more photosynthesis. We talked about that. And some of these examples are this, are kale, arugula, beet greens, onions, radish greens, watercress, char, bok choy, cilantro, basil, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, again, two different kinds here, um, and I think that's it's important to to know the difference between the two, to know what you're trying to go for, and to make it happen. And so, how do sprouts taste? How do we eat sprouts? Well, you got succulent, soft, flavorful, sometimes crunchy, uh, very fresh taste. You know, eaten alone or in combination with other foods. Start with adding sprouts to your plate with uh, what you currently eat, then gradually increase sprouts to decrease other foods. 
Um, you know, I remember when I was younger, my father uh, had us eating sprouts all the time. <laughs> and uh, we loved it, you know, growing up. We just, you just grew to love it. And so, you know, I think it's a great thing to introduce to young children um, so that they can get more live food in their diets. Uh, they can also be a garnish with your favorite uh, condiment and uh, they're, they have recipes available upon request. So if you want to reach out to them uh, to get some recipes with sprouts, please do. Um, I know they have delicious, delicious sprout recipes. Um, sprouts don't do well as a factory or farm product. So they must be prepared locally in your home or community garden and consumed ASAP before har or, uh, after harvesting. The sooner, the better. They have to be washed thoroughly um, or have them grown and shipped to you by someone you trust. Okay, So this is not something that you're talking about scaling up to a large, large level like you can do with microgreens. Uh, this is something um, much different and um, should be approached differently. Uh, the formula for a life of radiant longevity. So we've got the seed, which we've talked about, which is potential, and water, which is the elixir of life, equals sprouts or dynamic action, um, which I think they have laid out extremely, extremely well and beautifully in this presentation. All right. Um, and so if you want to learn more, from Dr. Jada about sprouting. Uh, sprouting is a part of our Living Food Certification Program, all right? And so they do a, a program where they will teach you more about sprouting. Um, some of those other things that they talk about in that program is that the knowledge and theory of food from the uh, Ayurvedic sense and the um, traditional oriental medicine perspectives, right? They talk about fermenting, uh, food combining for optimum longevity, Juicing and the science of juice combinations, dehydration, and seasonal soups with tonic herbs. So uh, a great, great way to extend your uh, knowledge and education. If this is something that interests you, you first time you're hearing about it and you're like, ooh, I really want to learn more about that, or you know about it, but you've never learned about it, and, and now you're extremely interested, please reach out to them. Um, take that class. That look, it looks like a, a great amount of information is being presented. Classes can be live and direct at the People's Clinic for Traditional Oriental Medicine. Um, they also talk about taking them online via recorded streaming. For more information, just email uh, J-A-T-A-M-A-L-A-1 at gmail.com. And so... Um, I hope you all were able to learn um, a decent amount about sprouts through this presentation. Um, two quotes that I think are beautifully put here um, are that, uh, one, we can't be satisfied with where we are now. And I think that's, that's exactly, when you think about a seed, it's exactly... We are all seeds, and that's exactly what a seed is not satisfied with being just in that state. So let's step out of the box, investigate, and be proactive for new adventures, new skills, new talents. Do it now. And I think that's all of us, uh, stepping out of our shells, stepping out of the box, stepping into ourselves, into our next generation, into seven generations ahead. I uh, thank you all very much. Uh, please reach out if you have any questions and join them for the question and answer session at the end.